the secret files of Teletran 2. Hey guys, welcome to our first comic show of the new year. It's time for Teletran 2. Um, and we have relatively little Transformers to talk about because... We're still waiting on the March release of the new series. So How far today, until we, it starts again? Uh, March, but then it's bi-weekly. Oh, okay. Oh, no, the- not theoretically. again. <laughs> that's theoretically. a lot of comics again. But it's IDW. Oh, no. Yeah, that's true. So, theoretically. Um, but, of course, with me, as always, is Andy. Hi. Hello, Andy. Hello, Mikey. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm fine. Mm. Uh, are you still pretty? Uh, no. <laughs> I'm not shocked. Yay. But, um... So today we're going to talk about Star Trek vs. Transformers issue 1, and we're going to talk about GoBots issue 1. Um, and in the Patreon show, it's time for Atomic Robo, with one of my favorite stories. Ah. Which is Atomic Robo and the Shadow of Beyond Time. Oh. Or something like that. Um, so, uh, I'm back from the gym as well, so I'm sore as balls, but <laughs> we'll, get, we'll get straight into it. Um, so, first issue... Uh, Prime Directive, uh, written by John Barber and Mike Johnson, who is a bit of a Transformers alumni himself. He has done the Beast Wars, uh, not Beast Wars, Beast Hunters, and uh, Rage of the Dinobot series with Mary Red. Uh, letters by Krista Meisner. Andy. Yes. Where's Tom? I don't know. He's not here. Not today. Tom, Tom where are you, Tom? <laughs> Art by Philip Murray. Colors by Priscilla Tramontano. Edited by Chase Maratz and David Mariotti. So we jump straight in in the 23rd century in the Starship Enterprise in the, tra- in the, the Transformers, the Star Trek animated series. Um, so they're called off course to Cygnus 7, which is at a lithium mining colony, which is in trouble. Uh, it's at the edges of Klingon space. Never good. Mm. Uh, Spock reports that they're being attacked by an unknown enemy and when they get there, they're rather confused because what's attacking them are mysterious 20th century jets and helicopters. Nee. Um, Kirk beams the team down and then they are attacked by one of the jets um, he catches a glimpse of its cockpit and he's like oh my god there's no one in there <gasps> they're driving themselves what could have happened in a book with Transformers that has this um, there's a jet star screen by the way and uh, basically he tries to lay them out and ends up blasting a hole in the mountain And it gets weirder when out of the mountain comes a red and blue truck, who may look familiar, um, who shields the Federation officers from the next attack. Kirk thinks it's a Klingon thing and shoots the truck. (laughs) (laughs) Um, The truck starts screaming because it's Optimus, and he barely manages to convince the Enterprise crew that I'm not the bad guy, and then he passes out. And Kirk is left with egg in his face. Awkward. Um... Kirk tries to get the mysterious attackers to identify themselves, and they're the Decepticons, Megatron, Soundwave, uh, some Seekers, and Arachnid, which was a bit of a shock. Um, Soundwave tries to take out the humans with a sonic blast, but it's jammed by the Enterprise. And then Kirk contacts the ship and orders a photon photon? Photon torpedo. Blast takes out, catches the Decepticons off guard, Soundwave is injured, and of course, Megatron sounds the retreat. But Soundwave has detected another signal. Uh, With the threat uh, removed, the Enterprise basically uh, have to figure out what to do with Optimus. Spock mind mills with him. And basically, it's like, oh god, it's it's alive, it's a it's a living thing, um, and they decide to try and you know give him medical aid. The Decepticons end up meeting up with Trypticon, who is now occupied by Klingons. Uh, their leader Curry uh, explains to Megatron that the humans have no right to be mining in their sector of space. Uh, Megatron mentions the Enterprise, and Curry is just like, oh my god, I can kill Kirk! It's amazing! And the two of them, as always, decide to work together. On Cygnus 7, uh, Scotty is trying to fix Prime, and he's like, Oh, oh it's so... Oh, I'm so fat. <laughs> like, uh, he's like so advanced and everything else. And slight problem as the Autobots beam in, and they are having none of it because they want to know what the humans did to Optimus Prime. Um, that was a very, very quick overview, but it's quite a quick issue. Yeah, agreed. So what's your thoughts, Andy? Um... 
It's. It, I think it's okay for what it is. I, I think uh, the demographic for this comic is lower than what a normal Transformers comic would be, oddly enough. This feels hmm. very much like an episode of either the G1 cartoon or the Star Trek um, uh, cartoon yeah. itself. And because of that, I think the readership should probably be around the same demographic. Because if I read this at about five or six... Uh, I think this is a perfectly good, interesting comic, but past yeah. that, it's got it, there's there's not really too much to it. Mm. Um, it's I I think they've replicated the look of uh, both cartoon series and mixed them together very well. The colors are really nice and striking and bold. Uh, mm. The designs are really spot on. Uh, apart from Arachnid, I don't like her redesign. Uh, her head looks bizarre. It looks out of place in terms of her proportions and everything else with the rest of the characters, I think. Yeah, it doesn't mesh up with uh, the rest of the people. Um, I, I think if you wanted to have Arachnid in, you'd need to do a bit more of a redesign. Windblade, who we see in the last shot, looks fine. Mm. Uh, because they've they've just gone with the more simplified look of Windblade, which is, you know, they haven't made it too complex. Uh, but with Arachnid, granted we don't see a huge amount of shots of her, uh, mm. She just stands out looking weird. Like it almost looks like she has a um, a ant backside on the on the back of her head for some strange reason, like a beehive almost, which is a, yeah. a weird choice. I um, feel it's really obvious she's the original character, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with that. Uh, but it's 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 okay. Uh, it's okay for the kids. If you want something deep, this is not where it's going to be. But it's 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 okay. What about you, Mikey? Um, I think, and I'm going to say this about the GoBots as well, I think it's very safe. I think this is better than the GoBots. I'll throw that out now. Yes, I also think this is better than GoBots. Okay. <laughs> um, we'll certainly throw that one on that later. Oh, yes. But um, I think they're following a very standard crossover format. Mm, um, yes. Which is good and bad. It means that there's nothing inventive here, but you're not suffering from problems like trying to innovate too much like Visionaries did. <laughs> um, and hopefully less editorial interference. Mm -hmm. But um, I like the art a lot. I think it really captures the vibe of the two series. I also think it's a very good idea to have gone with the animated series. Um, because it just it blends so well. Yeah. Um, I like, like you, I find Arachnid a bit off-putting. Um, it's just something, isn't it? Yeah, I think one of the major complaints I'd have is that it's very much plot point beats. Like, there's no substance to it. You know, they're going, okay, so aliens on the planet, okay, go to planet, mm. planet being invaded, planet Optimus helping, blah, 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 blah. Like, I would have liked a bit more character work. Like, for instance... There are, I'm sure, somewhere Transformers fans who don't know anything about Kirk and Spock on any major degree. I think maybe a bit of more banter between them would have been good. Yeah. Or I would have given McCoy more to do. Um, I, I would have played with the two um, animated characters a lot more. Like, mm. what are they named? Arex and Emrez? Or Merez. Um, And on the Transformers side, it, it's largely just sort of Optimus showing up, getting shot, and Decepticon flying away. I did think it was amusing. Uh, Prime obviously shields him from fire, and Kirk just shoots him. Well, Kirk. Th thank you for protecting us, alien. Pew! Better than Cisco. He'd have punched him. <laughs> oh, what a beautiful thing. <laughs> and he'd have gone down. That's right. <laughs> um, But that's a thing. You and I, we are quite familiar with the old Star Trek universe. For the most part, yeah. Um, But this is an era I have a lot less feeling for. I'm not... I haven't touched on a lot of the original series. I've touched on none of the animated series, bar that one episode of Spock. Oh, the one like, um, where he goes back in time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, that one. That, that one's that, actually not too bad for what it is. Where, where you were told, like, this is the episode that matters. And it's like, um, eh, not, not really, don't yeah, lie. But he had, a, he had a cat thing, Andy. He did. And it, it amused me, because it was super Hanna-Barbera looking cat yeah. thing, rather yeah. than a Star Trek looking alien. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, that would have been like a normal cat with a ridge over his eyes. Yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> um, but do you think, like, do you feel familiar enough with all the characters here to at least have that background knowledge filling stuff in? Uh, I, I guess so. I mean, I don't, the cartoon was, n from the few episodes I've seen, and I've probably seen about three or four, uh, they they're, they're they're super light. It's a you know, it's mm. a twenty minute cartoon, so they never really go too deep into the characters. The show was much better at that, obviously, because it had 
longer amount of time and it was at a different audience, which is why I say this feels much more just like a cartoon. I, I think this would probably play better as just a cartoon, to be honest. Yeah. Because yeah. if you put, like, how many issues is this meant to be? Uh, five. Like, I, I imagine if this was, like, a two- or a three-parter, uh, obviously not knowing what the, the future issues are because I haven't read them yet, I could see this working quite well as just, like, a, a two-part episode vhs special or something like that yeah yeah it's one of those things you really are surprised they didn't try at some point yeah well not not really because i don't think the i mean when did the star trek wasn't the star trek cartoon uh was that 70s late 70s yeah i was thinking it had to be late 70s but then you had tng as well i'm surprised we haven't had a transformers crossover like in some format i don't think it didn't feel like uh star trek wanted to go down that route back in the day you know, there there were a few crossovers, but not a huge amount. Mm. And from what I remember, the crossovers usually were within the same company. So the Flintstones and the Jetsons, are, they were yeah. kind of Barbera. Uh, the only real crossovers I really remember are like Laurel and Hardy and Scooby-Doo, which is, again was Hanna Barbera. Mm. And nowadays, what hasn't Star Trek crossed over with? No, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Didn't they, do, they did Master of the Universe, did they? Uh, I don't know about that, but they did X-Men. Uh, yeah, oh god, did you ever read, I never read I the comic, read but I did read the book. Yeah, I, I heard it was, uh, I heard there was a novel, and I was like, oh dear. It's very odd, there's like yeah. a, a training scene where Worf and Logan fight X-Men villains. <laughs> Which I, I was just like, really, you're gonna put Worf, Worf, TNG Worf. Oh yeah, like, t TNG Worf's terrible. You get the ass at, just like, up against superhumans. Like, because the story, if I remember was they discovered a planet which had mutations occurring and they were rising up against people and then it was just like, at the end, we could cure mutations, then we mm. could cure you, and they were just like, oh. And then it was just like, you know, the only people who ever offered to do that tried to kill us. <laughs> and it was really awkward. <laughs> <laughs> and then they, because I remember the book, it was definitely written after the X-Men movie. Okay. And they had a big, they had like a paragraph describing how weird it was for all the X-Men like, we've met Picard, and it's just like, he's so familiar. It's like, you really look like him, man. Oh, dear. That sounds a, yeah. bit, a little cringe. Yeah, especially since it was the comic suits and everything. They went into big detail and saying, like, orange, black stripes, the whole kit and Oh, right. Um, yeah. Um, something which plays into, because I have read ahead, I'm disappointed Triptycon's not redesigned. What? Uh, oh, just because of how things will turn out, you mean? Yeah, yeah, because okay. he's going to... Slight spoilers, he's not going to be redesigned. Right. So, and he, I think he should be. But, um... I don't know. It's a very soft book, which is fine. Yeah. It's just, like, the two writers... One is the IDW Star Trek writer. Mm-hmm. Mike Johnson. And the other is John Barber, who we know. What are the Star Trek comics like? Are they Are they, are they, are they deep... I hear they're very well received for okay. what they are. Um, franchise comics and everything else. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we know how deep John is into this. <laughs> no, John hates Star Trek. Yeah, John's a Star Wars man. <laughs> Picard, Kirk, he doesn't care. Who? He's Cisco. He, he, you know why? Because he's a Cisco man. <laughs> Damn straight. Um, so I was kind of hoping for a bit more, like, have some fun with the references you can make and everything else. But yeah, I suspect this is aimed at a bit of a younger crowd. It feels like it. And our our art in the nostalgia crowd who were just like, oh, we've all we've all been through this a thousand times. Yeah, they're they're waiting for uh, Kirk to say to to have McCoy say, I'm I'm not a, an engineer, I'm a I'm a doctor. I was like, oh, okay, uh, yeah, right, yeah, I'm I just get like, it. oh, see, I want like cuts like, hey, remember the time we were on this planet, or here's the name of a character or something like that. Do you remember not... when we fought the the Roman gods or the Greek gods? No, remember the time we were on the planet of pacifists with the Klingons and everyone got really pissy. <laughs> There's a lot of really dumb episodes in the original series. How many times have they been to another Earth? They, yeah, they, a lot. I wonder why. Was it to <laughs> save money, perhaps? <laughs> I'm surprised they didn't make this planet just look like Earth. Maybe they should have done. Mm. Just like, oh, we're on another... That's it. Like, oh, the Transformers Earth got pulled into their universe or something. Yeah. Can you explain to me the, the panel uh, where... Uh, it's it's fairly early on. They they arrive on the planet after the double page. It's the first page mm. after the double page where they arrive on the planet. It's the bottom left hand panel where it has an Andorian and a Vulcan. Yeah. 
what is that? Because that doesn't make any sense to me. Because the, the panel before that is Kirk looking at uh, his tricorder, and then it switches to, to an Andorian and a Vulcan who are never shown again. Are they mm. on the Enterprise? Is that is that the <laughs> Enterprise? No, this is a legit question because so. I, I don't know what that's meant to be. I don't I don't understand the context of that panel. I assumed all the Federation stuff was Enterprise based. Right, but the Andorian's not got uh, an Enterprise uniform on. Um, let's see. Do you, do you see the panel I'm I talking mean... about? My PDF is being slow. Um, <laughs> not your PDF. Slow. Oh God, why are you so slow? What page is it? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Um, right. Um, it's it to me visually it doesn't seem to make any sense. Or am I just being an idiot? Maybe he's a counselor. <laughs> maybe he's a counselor. An Andorian counselor. Okay, this is going to be yeah, nerdy, like... but I'm pretty sure the Andorians weren't part. Of the... <laughs> Were the Andorians part of the Federation at that point in in the original e... series? I don't know because Enterprise like they're not in Enterprise. Big part, but yeah, but they're not. They're no, not, they're not actually... in Enterprise because it's all about the meeting up. But that's right. I yeah. swear they were. I know, I know they're I in. They were. I know they're in the original series, but I don't know if they're part of the Federation at that point, which would explain why he's not in a Federation uniform. But yeah, I, mm. I don't. Which raises the question of why you on my ship? Well, that's the thing. Is that <laughs> that's that's why I'm asking? Is that the Enterprise? Because if you look around the edges, it's got like a, a purplish si- color to it. Oh, maybe it's the Cigna Seven people. Is it that there are being a att- maybe the miner? Right, a mining counselor. Okay, because to to me, I'm I'm still gonna say to me visually, it it seems to come out of nowhere and doesn't uh, make a lot of sense. It's it's stuck mm. there, and I couldn't figure out what it was meant to be. Because yeah. the 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 bubble shows that the it's still the captain talking, but the, it's coming from the mountain. So I'm guessing you're right. It is mm. probably the the miners, but it's not like there's any battle going on outside or anything like that. It's 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 a bizarre panel, at least to me. It's mm. weird, and I I also hate. Uh, f- later on, mm. where one of the panels is designed to look like a Starfleet badge, <laughs> but Andy, yes, Starfleet, it is, it is, and it's a sort of neat idea. But I think the just because of the colors and the stuff around it, it just doesn't, it just doesn't work. Mm. Uh, it gets a little bit muddy. Uh, not not muddy. That's not maybe not the right word. But it it, it gets a bit messy. I think for at least for my eyes. Because usually each each of these panels has like a white line kind of separating them, apart from the Starfleet yeah. badge, which is just separated by a, a, a very thin black line. Yeah, and it seems to I I don't know why that panel every, is a every Starfleet issue badge. it'll be a different symbol. Like <laughs> it'll be the Klingon symbol next, and then all about and then Septicon, and it'll be like see because you've read ahead. I don't know if you're taking the piss or if that's a theme. <laughs> I've no idea. Well, I'm not telling. <laughs> um, yeah. So, I mean, I don't have much else to say in it. It's no. a simple enough issue. How do we review this, though? Do we review this as as uh, men, in quotations, men, adult people would look at the comic? Or do we look mm. at it as where we're assuming the intended audience is, which is much younger? I think children will like this a lot. Yeah. Because it's like, hey, what if my toys smash together? Sure, yeah, yeah. But... I also think children won't will be wondering like who these people are. What Star they don't know, Trek? They don't know Star Trek. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, and they'll they'll say like, "Oh, Discovery," and you'll start beating the child until the child starts crying and just like, "No." I wonder what parents so cruel as to make the child watch watch Discovery. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> no, no, thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> Ten year old. No, no, six year old. Just like I want to watch something with space in it. All right, let's watch this show. Everyone dies. No. <laughs> watch this woman get savaged. And no. this man get raped. Good times. <laughs> she said fuck. <laughs> uh, that show. I don't like it. No. It's back, apparently. Yeah, I heard. I'm not watching it, I'll no, be honest. Nor am I. Um, and it's, <laughs> it's being sued. Um, but, like, as me, I'd be rating it maybe a five. Because I don't think it does anything particularly wrong. No, no. Um, as a child, I'd probably give it a seven or an eight. I, I honestly, I think as yeah. maybe one skewed younger, these don't always work out well. Is the dialogue so this... simplistic enough for them to be able to read as well? Do you think? That is a different question because I don't so think you... there were any mm. massively big words. 
mm. or complex words to like phonetically kind of slam out in your head. Like maybe dilithium and like uh, the the Klingon commander's name may be a bit of a. Uh, I, I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah. What's your rating then? Uh, I I think five is a very fair rating. I didn't hate this comic. Uh, I really love the art. I think the art's great. I I, I think mm, that's mm. the most appealing thing about it. It's nice, it's bright, it's colourful. It's got a very nice G1 cartoon aesthetic to it. The only issue I had is, like we said, uh, with Arachnid, who just seems bizarrely out of place. Um, uh, but the story just isn't that engaging. Uh, I much would prefer to see this as a cartoon. I think I would be very much into it if it was the 80s cartoon, which you would go, it's not that good. And I go, no, no, you're quite right. It's not that good, but it's it's entertaining yeah. for what it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's fair. Yeah. Um, in which case, let's move on to GoBots issue one oh. uh, with everything by Tom Scioli. Yeah. Everything. And David Hedgecock edited but it's mostly Tom Scioli. So props um, to Tom on doing a, a comic all on his own. I mean, that, that's commendable at the very least. <laughs> that sounds so patronizing. It's not meant to be because you I can You did a comic all on your it. own. Yes, you did. I, you did a comic all on your own, Mr. Like, Scioli. Oh, there, there are I know many it's not, but... There's not many people who do uh, comic books completely on their own without any assistance from an artist or uh, inkers mm. or anything like that. So, you know, that's cool. That's cool. It's like I know how you feel about this book, so it just sounded like well done for doing it all on your own. Yes, I, I was meant to, I was meant Tom. to be giving some kind of praise before I start saying things that I don't like about it. You know, start off with a plus. <laughs> I'm trying to be nice. So, um, let's get into it. The world as presented: GoBots are a robot race invented by humans to fill out their desires. Their cars, their assistants, their everything, and they're in the military. So we open with a first-generation self-aware jet leader one and his pilot Nick Byrne, who are in a hostage situation, or helping with a hostage situation. Uh, Nick gives leader one authorization to use lethal force, and he guns the fuckers down in a, in a, a way that is clearly meant to evoke the fist lasers. Um, meanwhile, Scooter drives his owner, a college student named AJ, to her go bio- gobotics lecture, sorry, <laughs> delivered by P- Professor Braxis, who looks like a friendly folk. Mm-hmm. Um, he invites Scooter in as a guest. Uh, Scooter introduces himself to the class. He explains where uh, the gobots come from and why they all have, or how, how each of them have full-on personalities. And then apparently the most popular sport in the world is gobot racing. We cut to a race where Turbo and his driver, Matt Hunter, uh, they are taking the lead in the race course, and they're all very happy. And in the winner's circle, uh, Hunter's kind of an egomaniac, uh, and kind of get on Turbo's nerves. However, that night, Hunter is approached by mysterious T. Coriander Banks. So many friendly names. Yep. <laughs> um, who has a business proposal. Maybe you and me get in the back of Turbo. Maybe things happen. Maybe I give you a hundred bucks. Maybe Turbo, maybe he... Uh, Turns his face on inside, so I know he's watching. Maybe we do it that way. Mm. Um, but Banks has a limousine, which is Stretch. Um, and basically, they're offered a chance to take care, play part in a new sport. Illegal go-bot fighting. And the current champion has murdered the previous contender and looks very familiar. Um, Matt's kind of like, I don't want this happening. Don't want Turbo to ha- get, you know, to shit kicked out of him. And basically, in order to get Turbo into the fight, they throw uh, Matt in so that Turbo basically has to save him. Uh, but Matt's like, hey, you can't hurt me. You got a G-chip. G-chips mean you can't hurt me. And the the Gobot, whose name I won't mention yet, um, decides to test this. But Turbo's in the way and the Gladiator robot I, where have we heard this before? Um, wonders why he's defending a human and Turbo retorts, oh, hey, I'm defending them and you're ent- entertaining them, which is worse. And they drive off into the night. Matt returns later on bringing the police. Um, the police don't believe him uh, until they find the remains of a mangled gobot. And they also find a lot of dead bodies. Someone or something has mangled people. Would, would you say the purple... they've killed them? Eh? Yes. Possibly with Sa- some sort of cycle. I was going to say psychotically, but okay, we'll, we'll go with yours Wheels. as well. Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> they were killed how? Wheels. <laughs> what? There's a horror movie about a wheel. There is. It's 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 bizarre. 
It's brilliant. Um, <laughs> so, of course, Cycle did the murdering. At the Pentagon, Nick and Leader One report to Gobot Command Center. Um, and they take... Basically, their next mission is taking out runaway Gobots. Gobots go rogue, which is basically they say, I don't want you to sit in me anymore. They're rounded up and turned off. But the latest group is managing to evade human authorities holed up somewhere on Route 66. Nick meets with the latest victim, a gas station attendant, who was nearly murdered by his sexy car. Uh, when he climbed inside her, and apparently she had a sexy voice. It's Crasher. Which, okay, I love Crasher. Mm -hmm. I do. But if there's one thing I would not attribute to her, it's a sexy voice. Well, to be fair, this is, this is repainted as the original version of Crasher, whatever mm. that one was called. Uh, so maybe th that one has the sexier voice of the two. <laughs> When she gets the face, know. she just, like, puts it in a whole new voice box. <laughs> She's like Bumblebee, but, like, she can talk. She just doesn't want to. There you go. Um, but, yeah, so, basically, the Crasher transformed, knocked the guy out, and then bugged him, taking all his fuel, money, and ammunition. Um, in the desert, uh, Leader One performs a flyover, and they're about to leave when they see an unmanned convoy of renegades. <gasps> Um, they try to intercept, but they're intercepted themselves by a helicopter. And Leader One is bl manages to blow the guy out of the sky, and sky but it attracts Sky Cycle's attention, and they escape into the canyon below. Mm -hmm. uh, Leader One tries to pick a fight, but Sky Cy Sky Kill <laughs> Sky Kill uh, takes him out in a fight. Um, then Sky Kill decides to expound his grand plan: Gobots are better than humans. We should be in charge. And we're going to blow them up with nukes. What a um, plan. We're gonna use <laughs> yeah. We're going to use launch codes. These launch codes are in Leader One Brain. And Leader One attempts to talk Cycle down. Uh, Renegade has other plans. And orders his new subordinates to pin him to the ground and extract the codes. Uh, he's held down by Tank. But Cycle tells the followers the battle has forced his hand. Now the Pentagon is aware of their existence. Uh, they won't be content to let them all live in the desert. And the only thing is to conquer the world. Um, AJ, meanwhile, is invited to dinner by her much older, much creepier professor, Professor Brax. Is, yes. which is just a scene that I didn't like seeing. Which part? Uh, I thought it, it I just... thought it actually got better when he sent her into the basement and he didn't yes. follow. I was like, oh, thank yes. God. <laughs> I, there was a vibe he was going to follow, but in yes. the basement because he says, "Why don't you go into my basement, little girl?" Mm -hmm. I got a friend down there for you. He's got They're candy. Real nice. <laughs> They're real nice. Um, and he's got Vamp down there. Um, so Vamp tries to kill AJ. Scooter intervenes. And Scooter threatens to break Braxis's neck. As the scientist is just like, ah. Uh, outside, it's madness as GoBots and all shape and sizes are running amok. And Scooter reveals <laughs> that there ha that, uh... Someone has deactivated the Asimov, Asimov laws, um, which have kept the Gobots in line. And AJ's like, are you going to murder me too, Scooter? And then he and wishbones, then... sir. Yeah, he just... Do you remember what Bumblebee did to Ravage? No, no, I mean I mean, wishbone is in one leg, one leg, and then pull. <laughs> <laughs> See, now I like my one better. Okay. Just grabs her spine and... <laughs> 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 um... And then he clenches the fist and the book is over. Dum, dum, dum. But it's also delayed, so there's only one more issue out so far. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, because IDW. Oh, jeez. How many issues is this meant to be? Is this meant to be five or, or what? Five as well, I think. Okay. Ooh, so, boy. Andy. Mikey. Initial impressions. It's it's got a it's got a lot of panels per page. It's got a mm. it's got a lot of panels per page. Jesus Christ, it's got so many panels per page. It is packed. Uh, yeah, a word I'd say. Uh, it's it's packed, but I don't I don't feel it's it's dense either. If you know what I mean. Mm. It's got a lot a lot of panels, but I don't feel that they're, they're telling a huge amount of a story to it. Uh, it's a pretty pretty easy story to follow. I don't like the fact it's subverting the uh, the 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 original lore of Gobots, which were there were human people with the brains put into robot bodies. I think that makes yeah. them a little bit more unique than Transformers uh, and a little bit more unique here which is just the human built robots that are going bad because bad. I, they want freedom effectively which you've I've seen quite a few times throughout my life on, on planet Earth so 
see this again, it's just like, okay, fair enough, a bit dull. Also gone for way more the, the toy look, which was, what, Machine Robo? Mm. Than the, the cartoon, and that was always a bit of a... Uh, interesting design choice, I suppose. Maybe it just goes with more Tom Scioli's uh, style. Maybe he was trying to emulate what a... Uh, if a kid was going to do a comic book, he would do them as the toys that he was playing with rather than the cartoon, perhaps? Maybe. Maybe? I'm not sure. Mm. Um, but it would <laughs> be Mikey, Cycle Gladiator. Yeah. Hey, for, he won one. That's the first. Yes, he did. Uh, he pulled <laughs> off somebody else's head. Good for him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I can't say I'm a massive fan of this. It's uh, mm. it's a story I feel I've seen quite a few times. Uh, the best panel, though, was the second last panel where it's just three A's. And I'm not sure <laughs> if he's calling for, like, the AAA service because his car's broken. <laughs> if he's being flung out of the car or if the, if the car door is holding his leg as it drags the back of his head along the concrete ground. Mm. Well, how did you take that panel? Which, which way do you I think it's going? Don't know. I don't not sure I care to be honest. <laughs> um, yeah, it's so you and I were not a big fan of the JJ versus Transformers, which while it had John Barber's name was basically Tom's baby. I looked at preview pages and went, I I'm okay, thank you. Uh, you mm. read some of it though, didn't you? Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Didn't didn't like it, but it was a raving success. Uh, it was widely loved by the wider public. Is this? If... No. Okay. No one's talking about it. Do you, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know if you've got your finger on the trigger, but do you have a feeling you know why? Is it because I it's do. GoBots? No, I don't think it's GoBots, because obviously this is playing up on the 80s hype. Right. right, yeah. I think the problem with this book is that it's remarkably safe. Mm. Whereas GoBot Gia Joe was like Tom Scully playing a big sandbox and being mad. Here he decided to stick to a very... Very restricted, very normal robot uprising story. Mm. Robots are mistreated in society. Oh, are they mistreated? Here they come. They're taking over. <laughs> oh, some of the robots will be on our side. How many times have we have we seen this? Mm -hmm, yeah. Not only that, but they basically lift directly from the Marvel Megatron origin story. Um, Did they? With the gladiator. F yeah, that's like Megatron oh, yeah. invented robot gladiator fights. Oh right, basically. I see what you mean. I, I thought you meant there was there was more to it than just that. Oh no. Okay. No, but like fine. basically they turned Psykill into Megatron, adding a bit of IDW in there, like yeah. rising up here against your oppressors. It doesn't. There was no need for like. Obviously, they wanted to probably avoid the aliens coming to Earth thing again, but they did not need to do it this way. Um, they could have had one aspect of human society evolved you know technologically advance and sacrifice their humanity and maybe it could be a political story about the two factions of the gobots having to maintain political uh status with humans mm. like leader one reading at the un or something like that i think that would be neat yeah yeah uh, it'd be original um but this feels very safe i mean they even bring in in, in uh, bloody isaac asimov at the end and i was just, i groaned when i saw that <laughs> i genuinely did because it really are you now going to say any sufficiently advanced technology is magic? Is this, that what you're going to do? This, this, I, when they brought in Asimov's laws, I thought this can't be targeted at a younger demographic, unlike no, the... No, it's definitely not. Unlike but... um, Star Trek, because you're expected to know the Asimov laws. And granted, the only reason I know the Asimov laws is because of a movie that I don't think I'm proud to admit I've seen, which is <laughs> iRobot. I've seen iRobot. Yeah, I, I'm not proud of that. I don't remember I robot very well, but <laughs> it's got Shia LaBeouf in it. Does it? Yeah, believe it or not, it was before Transformers, but he was there. Oh God! Yeah, baby Shia. Well, before the madness set in. Well, <laughs> the, I think the madness was always there, just below the surface. <laughs> yeah. Um. Mm. Uh, it's just, just. Basic. Very, very basic. And I really don't like the art. Why did uh, the Crasher thing seemingly drive up to the, the gas station and want somebody to come in? Well, <laughs> to come inside. Uh, We're back on Turbo's uh, uh, other job, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just mean get inside her in the non-sexual way. I assume like, it's because that? she wanted to knock him out and rob the place, but... But she only seemed what? to freak out when she said he said master, so was that... 
Was that just Maybe like she, she was always going to do it? Or was it the term master that pushed her I mean, the guy it? was kind of hitting on her. For some Maybe reason. she thought he was into BDSM and she was just like, hey, Crasher, don't roll that way. <laughs> Crasher is very much a top. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, the art. The art bugged the crap out of me. Um, it's not only the Tom Scioli less exaggerated than his Joe Joe versus Transformers art. Right. But it's still very 80s. And I have is it 80s? Before. It is 80s. It's based on um, the... I think it's based on the Lady Bird books. Someone's going to have to confirm that for me. But I think some of... the Lady Bird books look a bit more solid than a lot mm. of this stuff, but, but maybe I'm wrong. Stupid faux, co- faux aging on it that I hated. Like artificial yellowing and trying to like, oh, this is a book that's been out in the sun too long. Mm. Oh, someone spilled tea here. <laughs> I was like, no, no, fuck off with that, Tom. No offense, Tom, but fuck off with that, Tom. And I just was like, the characters did not grab me. Apart from the fact that this had a weird, like, there was a weird rapey vibe with Braxis. And I'm just going to spoil it now. Issue 2 also has a weird rapey vibe at one point. Oh, no, really? <laughs> yeah, more aggressively so. Oh, no. Um, Why, but... Turbo? <laughs> Max de- close... Ma- Matt Hunter, don't swing that way. You're closer than you think. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Also, um, GoBot Racing, I have to ask Mikey, why does hmm. nobody else have their GoBot turn into a robot at any time? Yeah, why does no one else just have a car? <laughs> well, to be fair, they wouldn't be GoBot Racing. Well, maybe they, maybe they could just race. Maybe that's it. Maybe it's not GoBot Racing. Maybe it's just regular racing. And, and Matt's cheating. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh, uh, no. Jump, Turbo! They'll uh. never know. It's like that guy who like um tried to show he won the London Rally by taking a taxi and waiting <laughs> at, the, at the end of the thing and rushed out of the rushed out of the hedge and just like <laughs> <laughs> I did it. <laughs> that 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 happened. I thought that was just a, th- a skit from like TV oh, that shows. Wow, that one did that. <laughs> I wow. didn't win, but <laughs> <laughs> because you know it's London and there's cameras everywhere. No, that's true. Um, I don't know. Like none of the like none of the Gobot characters are interesting. They're not any. Like, they're not characters really, as far as I can tell. They don't play all, like I was kind of interested when it was like here's your le- here's your hero character here's leader one here's him slaughtering people. Mm. Like I was kind of interested. When it looked like we were going to play out that, but then it just sort of went f- robot butlers. And again, it played very safe with like. Is that an anime? Of, probably. Um, <laughs> like that. What, what, what would it be like that? Um, yes, master thing from years ago that never got translated here because hmm. it was considered too raunchy or something like that. Okay. All I remember is that there were maids and a crocodile. Uh, pff, obviously. So someone will know what that is. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just. It doesn't have the weirdness of G.I. Joe versus Transformers, and it just doesn't have anything else going on for it, in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, any any other thoughts? Because I just think very little of it, if I'm honest. And I, the only people I've seen like it are people who will like it simply because it's GoBots. Oh, is that fucking Charles? Is it him? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Charles. The GoBot fanatic, Dr. Charles. Sitting there, rolling in his mint condition rock lord combining fossil thing. <laughs> and he's just like, ah, oh, these rocks are going where no rock has gone before. Laminating <sighs> his perfect grade uh, GoBot collection. He's got a spacey, and he's just saying, like, no, it doesn't look like she has an afro, or he has an afro. <laughs> it does. Especially on the cover of next GoBot's issue. It absolutely oh. does. Did you, what, what, did, what do you think of Punk Cyclops being introduced into this issue as well? It was... Did you see him? <sighs> yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, that was weird. There's a dude with, like, a green mohawk, and he's wearing Cyclops' uh, 90s visor. But with yeah. obviously a choker collar on, and he's very prominent, so it has to. It, it's not like an accidental reference. That is right mm. in your face. That feels like something like I saw the Dark Knight Returns. <laughs> <laughs> also, the the dude uh, who uh, brought Matt Hunter to the the fighting ring. You know who mm. he looked like. He looked like who? a super pale version of General Hammond from um, Stargate SG One. <laughs> <laughs> this is him before he cleaned up and joined the military. Yeah, he like fused some <laughs> glasses to his face and just never went into the sun. Like once, like the one specific panel I think that is the 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 panel where he says put him to the test. Mm. That's the General Hammond panel. 
if you needed to know people who have got this comic, there you go. Stargate fans, watch out. Yeah. I'm just looking like this weird quote from Crasher. Just remember one thing. You don't ride us. We ride you. Uh, <laughs> I, I remember all, like I, I, I actually went uh, <laughs> out loud what at that doing? point. What you doing there, Crasher? To be fair, there, uh, as... bit of a bit of a subtext here, darling. To be fair as well, did Vamp actually do anything wrong that we see? Vamp walked. Vamp. We're implying Vamp wanted to kill someone, but we are implying that. But he didn't even have his hands outstretched to her. He just it's walked like, up what? behind her and Please then Scooter punched through the for four months. Exactly. Scooter <laughs> punched through the door, and then the next <laughs> panel is Vamp like raising his hands or its hands to the sky, going freedom. <laughs> I'm saying Vamp's the victim here, unless issue two proves me otherwise. Does it? <laughs> Not really. Okay. Um, but it does kind of hint where the story is going to end up. Okay, fair enough. Um, does, does Scooter uh, sure you can AJ in the next issue, <laughs> panel one? He comes out and he's like wearing her like a, a war robe around his head. <laughs> and it's like, rap- he's gone full Rambo. He's Shinku Hadoken, sir. <laughs> Hadoken! Ah! As she falls oh, to the ground, man. screaming profound sadness. Yeah. <laughs> but suddenly she sounds like Chun-Li. <laughs> no, it would have to be the the quote uh, from, from Guy from Street Fighter War 4 when he loses every match and goes, Profound sadness, sadness, sadness. Thud. <laughs> yeah, but that's GoBots, I guess. Mm, I didn't like it. No, I wasn't a fan. Uh, I much preferred Star Trek. Um, because even if the story wasn't there for Star Trek, uh, I didn't feel the panels were were uh, drowning me uh, with things, mm. um, uh, so it was it was visually a lot nicer. Uh, but that's just my personal uh, eye pleasure tastes. Yeah, and don't judge what me by we... my eye pleasure tastes. I will judge you by your eyes, <laughs> as Braxis would say. You got a pretty mouth. Yay! And pretty eyes. Yay! Get in my basement. Oh no! <laughs> I captured that robot years ago. He was voiced by Odo, Mikey. He wasn't, was he? Yeah, he was. Oh my god. At least he was in the pilot. Jesus. Yeah. I haven't seen the pilot in I don't know how long. Yeah, I'm, I'm like 70% sure that was Odo's voice actor. So, oh. what we, so what we've got here is like young, young General Hammond before he got clean and joined the military. Yeah. And we've got Odo when he was on like some sort of bin, binge bender or something like that. He's, he's just like, I'm a person. He's going around learning about uh, solids, the stupid solids. <laughs> And he just saw Vamp and was like, get in my basement, I want to turn into you. <laughs> um, but yeah, I would give this... To... We don't really do half marks, but no. it's kind of floating between a three and a four for me. I think four, because it's not like yeah. egregiously not bad. It's just poor. Yeah, it's and just... It doesn't, I don't, I don't want doesn't, to read it yeah. again. And it doesn't have the weird factor that would at least bring you back to G.I. Joe. No. No. Um, because hey, Braun got married in that. Like if Psykill started eating humans, I guess that would be something which a bit feels different. More, which feels more natural than the time Megatron did it. Y- yeah, yeah. Oddly enough, <laughs> like that's how we got yellow teeth. <laughs> oh, oh. What if like, at the end of this book they've all been rebuilt to look like classic GoBots, like the the ta- cartoon models, weird. and it's just in that in that art style. Now, what the entire art style changes? <laughs> yeah, that would be bizarre. <laughs> It might be an improvement. Maybe. Maybe. Mm. Uh, anyway, so we're not happy with GoBots. Um, I don't know if we'll be revisiting either of these books in depth. Uh, because obviously we've only got a month before we've got another two books, brand new books of Transformers that we're going to deal with. I think we should um, probably try and... We'll probably try and cover a few issues next month, though. Mm, yeah, I think we'll have to. And I, I feel um, that at the very least, uh, I'd like to... Because we've started Star Trek and neither of us outright hate it, mm. we could we could finish off Star Trek. I'd be okay with that. Yeah, and it's light reading, so it's not yeah. like it's... I mean, depth. I can't imagine we're ever going to have like an hour discussion on the, the intricacies of Star Trek versus Transformers. True, true. <laughs> um, 
but yeah um well we'll see how it goes guys thank you all for listening if you're on patreon stick around if not consider joining us on patreon over on the Moonbase 2 patreon page uh we love having you and for just two dollars a month you can get access to the extended version of our comic show and you get our moon base woo woo and you get other shows and interviews released a week early i was going to say a month but that's a lie um if you want to leave us any feedback, you can do it over at themoonbase2 at gmail.com or on our Twitter at themoonbase2. If you're on Patreon, you can leave us feedback there. We love getting it, and it's usually good. And Tentamon is a freak. Uh, uh, let us know as well. I'd be interested to hear what people's thoughts are on, on Star mm. Trek and Go. Uh, more importantly, GoBots, because like you said, yeah. no one's talking about GoBots. So what I want to know, of it? is it hitting your buttons? Because I've seen, like, I know Scotty P over on <laughs> Cybertron likes it. Scotty P. I pay. Um, but I want to see more because he he's the one that interests me because he's the one I don't think is like massively overcome by nostalgia. Okay. Who's saying I like it because GoBots? He seems to actually just genuinely like it. Um, so guys, keep in touch, keep us going. Um, if you want to contact me, you can do it on Twitter or on Irish Paleo and on, on YouTube as GWolf3. Andy, Mikey. Market yourself. Uh, you can find me on uh, Twitter as CCTFW, on YouTube as Cobra Commander TFW. You can find this podcast on the Moonbase 2 forums on Twitter, iTunes, Facebook, Libsyn, uh, YouTube as Moonbase 2 Transformers Podcast. You can also uh, go to the ccbunker.weebly.com, see all the things that aren't Transformers related that I do, as well as the Transformers things that I do. I, I put up uh, as of today, today being uh, Tuesday, uh, the playthrough that I've done for Battlefleet Gothic Armada 2 for uh, for Mr. Oh, Crumpet. That. At least part uh, one. I have to check that out. Yay! It's an hour, so because it's the entire prologue, so. Mm. Yay! Yeah. Um, so yeah, check them out, guys. Um, thank you again, and we will talk to you soon. Patreon guys, talk to you in a minute. Bye-bye!